Okay, in the previous video, we already connect our API, our front-end application with our back-end API, and we know how to do it, and we use a fetch. I wouldn't leave you with that, because we haven't done um, much with this. We know how to actually send a request, but we don't know how to properly communicate with our API, and let's do that now. So I'm not gonna overcomplicate this, as we don't have much time. This is a very big topic, so if you're interested in the movie description, uh, I provide a coupon code for a full course. Full course about this topic where I uh, get things much uh, slower than this, but uh, here we don't have a time, so I will uh, try to do as much as I can in a short uh, time. So uh, what we will do is duplicate this button, and then we have one click, we have a login here, I will have a, another method to register, and this button will be register. So what we can actually quickly do is I will just duplicate this. This wouldn't be a best, uh, the best design for have, having like this because there is a, a lot of repetition here. What you should do is to actually have it in a separate component probably and share some data in between. Anyway, I'm doing a quick uh, test, so I'm trying to do as much as I can here. Uh, so what we do, we can remove that uh, console lock from both methods and we have a new method to register. So this time we can use our method that we use with the postman. So API user, it will be also post and it will also send the same kind of username and password. So once we have that data, then we will have user created in our database. So uh, let's see if that's working. I will save it here. That's been refreshed so we can have a user here. So what I can do is I can make it full screen open our inspect and in the console or in the network we should see some data. So I will uh, put my username and password. This time I will do Christian2 and Christian2. So I will register now and you can see here actually it will fail because if you go here you will have using a defined backend API So in fact, we have user here, it's supposed to be users, and it's kind of telling you that. So we go here, and then we need to fix it for users. That's what we specify. And then let's try it again. And then I will click register. And that's failing as well, because user with that username already exists. As you remember, we already had uh, two. So I will change it for four, and four here and I will register. And this time, oh, we already have a four, so let's give it a try with five. And then I will register, and we have our user. So you can see here, another user has been created in our in database. And using the same form, what I could do is I could click login, and you can see here, I have a token for a new user. So that token, what we can actually do with that uh, token at this point, normally when you want to design your application, you don't want to have it like this. This is uh, a bad design to have a login and register uh, two buttons uh, we, like that. You're supposed to change a little bit uh, here and probably for register, you ask for more data but we try to simplify everything so we have it uh, everything here what we could actually do is we could take this uh, call outside and then we can uh, after we register we can actually ask for uh, for the token it doesn't really matter at this uh, point but let's say after the login when we have our token what can we actually do with that token so i will make a little bit more space here and then we have app.js so what I can do is I can have a callback function here and I will pass it as a props. So I will say user login and that's gonna be user login like this. And then I will do this user login. Actually, I don't need to do this user login because this is functional component so I can do constant user login it will be an hour function and I will have something here so basically oh, I forgot our function here and then we'll pass a token here 
So let's say console log token. So this is this is the function that will actually will be listening for whatever happens uh, in the child component and it will put it here. So I will just need to implement that user login props. So whatever this uh, login happen and then we have the data, what we can do is this that props and then user login and then we'll pass that login there. So what we have in case we have the props and if you uh, don't know what the props you need to uh, go and search with the props how to pass the data in between the components basically we are passing this uh, data outside to the parent and we can catch it here. So going back here let me log in again Christian and I will click login so let's go to the console I will click login and in fact we have that but this one time you can see the console is coming from the app JS here so at this point we have that token here so what I can do is state token and at the moment uh, at the beginning it will be empty Actually, I can't have a state here because that's the functional component. So I have two options. I can use uh, use state. So let's do that. That will be the hooks. Use state. So I will do So we'll deconstruct it. I also explain more about this in the course. So if you are curious, uh, so at the moment we will have the, that as an initial state, and we'll have a token, and then set token. So I can use this function set token to set a token like this, and then I can do console log to make sure it's working so I will use the token uh, we need to name it so I can do talk because we have uh, the same version uh, the same variable passing here and here so I will just refresh it and come back here so I will log in again and in fact it is empty So we have that and then console log token. So let me just duplicate it and see what's actually in the dog. So login and we have that in dog. So I guess this is not yet updated, whatever we call it, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so what we can actually do, and we'll come back to this uh, issue uh, later on, I'll just remove it for now. And we have the token in our uh, functional state here. So what I can do is we can actually have another button here, or we can create a new component. So I will create a new component here, and I will say books. JS. So we'll have a list of books. I will do similar thing as we've done here. So I will copy everything here and I will paste it. So basically I will clean it up a little bit. So I will remove all of those. I'll just keep it the component here and then render return and then I remove the whole option and then what we want to do is we want to have a uh, books so I will copy books here and uh, that will be books in h1 like that so it's a very simple component at the moment we don't do anything here so I will go to app.js I will import that so that will be books from the books and once I have that I can actually include it in here so books 
like that. Once we have it here, we should see the books. So what we want to do is we would like to display a list of the books from our API. And the reason I have the login here because I need to have a token because I would like to show you how we can actually protect our API from not uh, being accessible by anyone but only for a login user and for that reason we have that token there. So let's come back to our API here and what we can do is we can quickly uh, do something. So I will create a model, we haven't done any models yet, so what I will do is I will create a new model here. So I will do class and then I can use the, the models uh, well, so I, for my, in my case, I will try to do a book and I will do models and then I will do model like this and let's include just one single uh, field and I will do title and that's going to be models text field and then we can do max length, let's say 32 and then I will do blank false and then also null false. So something like that, very easy. I need to do a capital. So very easy model here. We will basically create a new table in our database with the books. And what we will uh, do is we will I need to, I have some errors. What we'll do is we'll store the books and we'll have just a title there. So what we need to do if we want to have it like this, then I will kill the server. And what I need to do is I need to do make migrations. So I'll just create uh, whatever I've created here in the models and I'll create a migration. So what I need to do is I need to apply that on the database migrate like this. So we have a new table in a database which the uh, book and we'll have a title there. So what I can do is I can run the server again. And let's come back here and I will go to the admin. We already been there and we have actually we will need to add this to the admin if you want to use it. So uh, actually I need to go here and then we have admin. So what I can do, we will from models import book admin register book and I will have it like that. So if I will go here and then refresh it, actually I think it's admin site register and we have our books here. So what I can do is I can add few books and that's actually text area so it is uh, bigger but I limited that I could I could use a char field in fact but anyway it doesn't really matter for us so what I can do is I can do a uh, hop bit and I will save and uh, add another one and then another one will be Twilight Saga. And then I have two of them, let's say another one, The Witcher. So let's go for uh, our fantasy books. And then, of course, we could have more fields here. Um, but I, I try to keep everything uh, here very simple. So I have three books here and they are uh, publicly accessible and no, actually not yet. So what we need to do to have them accessible, we have a, a view sets here, but we never add a view sets for our book. So what I will do is I will duplicate the, our view set, the user one, and I will create one for book. We'll use the model view set, but this time we will use a book here so what I will need to do is I will need to import that book so from models import book now that is fine so I will need to also use the book serializer so I will have that serializer imported but I don't have it yet so I will need to go to serializers and then I will need to uh, create it here so I will duplicate whatever I have here 
I don't need any of those. What I will need to do, to do is the book serializer, model serializer. This time we'll use book. So also I will need to import. So from, I'm kind of doing things fast, but basically it's a copy paste. Whatever we've done before, we need to do it here um, for the another model. So I'm trying to import everything here. And then I have a, let's say ID and then title. ID comes uh, automatically with a Django, so we have that. So another thing what we need to do is in the URLs, as we register our users, we also need to register books. And this time it, it's not going to be user view set, but also book view set. And this book view set will be here. So that will be automatically added to our API. Okay, so let's open our Postman and see how, uh, what it's actually available in the books. So if I'll go Postman here, and then we'll go API slash books slash, and then I will use method get. And this is working. We have uh, this uh, three books there. So let's try to fetch them uh, in our uh, React application. So I have this one. Then we, what we can do is we can actually pass the token into the books there. So I'm just passing this uh, token around. What I could do is I could put it in the cookies. That will be much easier. But uh, let's say I will, I will do it this way. So I will pass that token and then in the books I could actually use it. So I can uh, use it with the props. Have a button here. Button here and I will do fetch books or load books. This is very not functional application here because we are creating an application that is very not user friendly, but uh, our point is uh, completely different. So I will do on click and then I can say load books. Actually, it is load books. So I need to create a um, load books here, and then I gonna do um, our function. I don't need to pass anything there. And what we can do is from here, I can just uh, copy this method there. It will be much faster, and I will put it here. So fetch books, and then uh, we can do state here. So state. books and in fact the book is empty at the beginning so what I can do is I can set a state here so this time we will have a, a list of books we are expecting list of books from the API books and that needs to be method get of course and then what I can do is this set state and then I can say books are data whatever is coming from the from our service here so what we want to do is we will have the fetch data here and then we also need to do uh, something here so i will do it like that and then we'll go this that state books and we'll loop through the books so i will do map and then for each book I will do another function here. We can return and let's say we will return h3 and then we can have a um, book title. Also, you will need to have a key. Otherwise, it will complain about this. So it will be I will do key book ID. Okay, we have all elements in place. So let's come back here and see what we have here. There. And if I will actually open the network, close all of it. If I will load books, you can see the books are here. And also I print them here. So this is all fine, but I kind of open our API for everyone that anyone can actually ask uh, for uh, books and get it. So how uh, we can actually secure it, not to allow the um, random user from anywhere to uh, get the list of the books. So let's do it now and secure it a little bit better.
and let's come back to our views here and in the build book view serializer what I can do is I can specify the permissions for that view set so what we can do is we can import so from rest framework authentication import token token authentication and what we can do is authentication classes we can pass a token authentication here and then comma here and, and that uh, that way it will treat this as a, a tuple not as a single record and then we can do permission classes and then we can use is how uh, actually we need to import it first so I will actually can duplicate this and this is from permissions I will do is authenticated so we will have that is authenticated here in the similar way so we have authentication classes and permission classes so if I will come back here and then let's refresh it to start with a clean one I can do load books and you can see we have some problems so first authentication credentials were not provided so what does it mean that means we need to authenticate this user if we want to have that uh, list of the books otherwise we'll just get the we have uh, some problems here because we are not expecting uh, this uh, this to happen that the books will be empty at the moment it's empty try to uh, loop through that so that's the error this is not related uh, with this one we should actually handle this case if we have actually books then you can loop through them if you don't you don't loop through them but this one we need to provide the authentication so how can we actually do that if I will go here I can have a headers here and in the headers we can specify other things so at the moment we have only content type so I can add another authorization and then we can pass it in authorization actually a string so I will do a backtick here and I will do token and then uh, space and I need to pass a token that it is uh, here so what I can do is this props actually I need to inject a variable here so this props and then token like this this is what we are passing to this uh, application we'll see if that will uh, will work or not so first I will need to authenticate myself I will clean it here so login I am authenticated I expect to have a token there passed to my, my books and if I will look load books you can see they have been loaded because I use the token now so if I will go books here and then if I will go headers I will zoom it out a little bit you can see authorization token this is what we are passing in our headers token and this uh, token there and that way I could get back my books again otherwise if I don't have if I don't have this one and this uh, token is I will remind, remind it, it, it is coming from here so from the parent which is app.js and he, he's getting that so from the login actually so from the login we have that token we pass it to our power, parent which is our application and then with the props we pass, pass it to the box so that's how we uh, manage to send that token so we set it here and then we pass it to the books in the books we can read it with this props token and then we can use it and it, uh, in that way you have a full control over what would you like to secure and how would you like to secure so basically uh, usually what you have is whenever you look uh, login you send that token into the cookies and then you can say okay if I have that to token in the cookies I can actually go to the um, application otherwise I will be kicked out and I will need to log in first once you will have that token you can go to application where you have a list of something and then you can reuse that token for um, any call and in fact you, you have a full control what would you like to enable uh, for your application to be accessible with that token or not we just created another model here a very simple one but you might have a hundreds of them here and you can for each of them you can des decide it 
if you will open that or if you don't open uh, that uh, for for the public use and it's really up to you and this is the way how you can actually uh, communicate with the uh, or react with our uh, with the Django and you can see here we can specify a different method so we have a different methods get and you can the same way you can use also the put that will be it there was a lot of uh, things to cover I've done it really fast the faster <laughs> the fastest I, I, I could because otherwise it would take hours and hours to fully explain it if you are curious uh, um, and who would like to more know details about this I have a, a full course on Udemy about uh, this topic how to communicate Django API with uh, react and that's uh, hours of hours of uh, learning so I uh, explain everything much slower and much more in details and uh, if you like this um, video and i would like to have more videos like this please do subscribe on my channel or i'll try try to produce a uh, more free content like this in the future